Hello, good evening. It's 5 p.m. in Washington, D.C., 10 p.m. here in Accra, midnight in Strasbourg, France. This is News at 10 on TV3. I'm Stephen Ente. We're coming to you live from the News Hub. Uh, digital address GA 0066714 at Desawe Kanda in Accra. Let's start with what's making round on the local front. And tonight, samples from families of the kidnapped girls to enable DNA tests on four human remains recovered from Takrade are to be taken Wednesday, August 14. Director of Public Affairs for the Ghana Police Service, ACP David Aklu, who made this known after the acting IGP and his team visited the families, said the police will not object to an independent DNA test to further assure them of the results. On tonight, government has presented 1,491,000 CDs as compensation packages to families and victims of the Fuansi shooting incident in the Ichima Kwanguma district of the Ashanti region. Each of the family of the four deceased persons received 250,000 CDs, while 32 others injured were given 491,000 CDs to cover their medical bills. On tonight, President Kufuado says Ghanaians will not entrust power into the hands of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, in 2020 due to their determination to cancel the free senior high school policy. The president was addressing staff and students of the Bogatanga Senior High School in the Upper West Region, in the Upper East Region, I beg your pardon, as part of his two-day working visit to the region. in business. The Business Development Ministry has created 4,750 jobs under its capacity building for young entrepreneurs and startup initiatives. The Sector Minister Dr. Ibrahim Mohamed Awal gave the figures when he took his turn at the Meet the Press series in Accra. He noted 7,000 young entrepreneurs were trained under the PBSP with 1,350 receiving funding in 2017. Right, so those were news making round on the local front. Uh, let's now check some news uh, making the headlines on the international scene. We'll start from the US and China. The United States is delaying imposing tariffs on some, on, on some imports from China until 15 December because of health, safety, national security and other factors. The products include mobile phones, laptops, video game consoles, some toys, computer monitors and certain footwear and clothing. And still on the international front, a top U.S. immigration official has revised a quote inscribed on the Statue of Liberty in defense of a new policy that denies food aid to legal migrants. The head of citizenship and immigration services tweaked the passage, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The official added the words, who can stand on their own two feet and who will not become a public charge. And in Denmark, the Danish Prime Minister, Meet Fredriksking, has officially said sorry to hundreds of victims of historical abuse in state-run homes. From 1945 to 1976, children were sexually abused, beating and drugged. 
uh, their homes. An official inquiry found the abuse took place across Denmark and campaigners have for years appealed to the state to accept that it was at fault. Out here in Africa, Ebola expert Jean Jacques Moyembe says the development of drugs proving effective in curing 90% of early stage Ebola patients feel like the achievement of a lifetime. Dr. Moyembe was part of the team investigating the first outbreak of the virus in the country in 1976. Uh, the governor of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania has suggested the creation of a database of married men for single women to check as a way of stopping philandering. Paul Makonda said the idea came to him after meeting many women who say men have cheated on them. After he invited single mothers to his office last year, the governor is known for his controversial statements that do not always materialize. Right, so uh, those were news making round on the international front. Let's start with our very first story tonight. Families of kidnapped girls uh, are to enable DNA tests on four human remains recovered from Takradi and are to be, the, these DNAs are to be taken Wednesday, August 14. Director of Public Affairs for the Ghana Police Service, ACP, David Ikulu, who made this known after a visit to the family, said the police will not object to an independent DNA test to further assure them of the results. ACP David Eklu was briefing the media at the Western Regional Headquarters of the Ghana Police in Sekendi after the Inspector General of Police, James Opombuenu, and a team of police personnel paid a visit to four families whose relatives have gone missing for more than a year in the Sekendi Takradi metropolis. The IGP's visit took him to Takwa to the house of the fourth victim, Ruth Abaka, whose case has not received much attention. At the house of the second victim, Ruth Love Quaison, the families expressed the desire to conduct an independent DNA test after that of the police. In a response, ACP David Eklu said the IGP has given his assurance that there will be no objection for an independent test if that will assure the families the more. The critical stage now is to get the DNA samples of the four families which will be matched against the remains that we have found. One or two of the family members raised that concern, and it was made clear to them by the Inspector General of Police and his team that we don't have any objection to that. If they want to engage an independent person or expert to do that, it is, it is normal that you need to confirm what we have. So we don't have any objection to that. He also revealed that the Director of Religious Affairs of the Ghana Police Service, ACP Reverend Father George Arthur, has been appointed as the liaison officer for the families. ACP Eklu added that there will be an after-action review where any officer found to have been complicit in the discharge of duty in the course of the case will be dealt with. The critical stage now is to get the DNA samples of the four families which will be matched against the remains that we have found. One or two of the family members raised that concern and it was made clear to them by the Inspector General of Police and his team that we don't have any objection to that. If they want to engage an independent person or expert to do that, it is, it is normal that you need to confirm what we have. So we don't have any objection to that. Right, so let's get on to the telephone lines and speak with fraud and security consultant uh, Richard Kumado. Mr. Kumado has been a national security operative for several years and is well versed in some of the techniques involving some of these investigations. Mr. Kumado, it's nice to have you here. I know that you and I have had the conversation many times over police procedures and uh, how to speedily get to the bottom of this investigation. The acting IGP 
appears to be uh, putting his foot forward and moving fast. We're now getting information that the DNA samples uh, would be collected by August 14, and the IGP has said that he will not rule out the independent uh, DNA inquiry if that is so needed. Do you see this as, for example, bowing to pressure from the family, or you would say that this is actually what needs to be done and commend him for it? It's two ways. I mean, good evening to your viewer. I think the IGP, IGP paid a working visit to Takra Day to sit with the families is very commendable, and this is what we have been asking for. Uh, we could also say that we want to thank the campaign that is that bring our guests home and the media and everybody who has added their voice to this particular issue. Considering the fact that it has been a, a very issue that the police have not been able to handle properly, we are hearing that they have appointed a liaison officer, which all together is a very good thing as somebody who has taken over. And he wants to be abreast with the issues on the ground. And I commended him for this proceed to do more of this one and his job will be safe. Mm. So I know that uh, the inquiry into whether or not the bodies that were found in Takradi uh, belong to uh, the missing girls is, is a complex matter. And the family at a point denied cooperation to get the DNA. Later they changed their mind. Now the IGP is telling us, uh, which I asked you earlier, that it will not object to an independent DNA test to further assure them of the results of this uh, DNA that would be conducted. Do you, how do you uh, see the significance of this in the scheme of the investigations that are ongoing so far? I think we are making a headway, but it's rather unfortunate that uh, we've read a roadblock where families are not trusting their independence and the professionalism of police that they will want to take their own independent DNA test. Having said that, collaborating with the families to do what is right, to come to a conclusion that will be acceptable by everybody, is a commendable action. And we will employ them to work hand in hand with the family. Where there are difficulties, let's deal with it as professionals who know exactly what we are doing. And I believe that the first action of the IGP or the acting IGP, going to Takade to speak to the family, is reassuring and it's something they will want to continue on. There they can have a dialogue with the families and they will not have any difficulties at all crossing any hurdles that will appear. Now let's look at the liaison officer who has been appointed. The liaison officer uh, is a reverend minister. Uh, do you get the sense that this place... Uh, any more role in all of this? Because I'm asking this on the back of the fact that when this uh, issue broke, there have been suggestions that the state, that is the police institution, should have been uh, appointing a clinical psychologist to work with the families to manage their trauma and also to put them in a sane uh, mental state. Do you feel that the appointment of a reverend minister who is... Uh, although part of the, the police service, a chaplain of the police service, is, is, is a further in the step for, for this kind of engagement? Yeah, in the first instance, we could say great, but it also depends on the background of the chaplain and the background of the liaison officer. If he has the capacity and well abreast with issues of trauma, and he has the experience as a working officer within the Ghana police service, then it's a good thing. But I also believe that if the family needs more than that, with a dialogue we have established with the police and having the pastor as the head leading that delegation, I believe they will make a headway. And these are some of the things we have to be doing as professional police officers, providing policing that ensures that we have cohesion with the stakeholders. In this particular case, the family of a victim of such a honor crime. Mm, I usually hate to uh, compare records, but we've had uh, IGP Asante Pietu's approach to this, and we're, we're having Opon Bueno's uh, approach also to, to this. He has stepped up. He's visiting these families. He's showing presence. He's showing face. He's engaging them. He's making them feel that they're part of the solution. Uh, how do you contrast the two approaches, the past IGP and the current one? It is it is based on the on the on the past experience. You remember he was part of the old team, or he was part of the team of his boss, 
and he, he could see from hindsight some of the mistakes they made and the public euphoria and agitation that went against them, uh, which is in the negative. So probably he has listened to wisdom and reasonable counseling is taking place, and he wants to correct the mistakes right. of the past. Mm. And I think that he has done a good thing. His first step is very commendable, and I pray that he brings the best practice to the job. But Stephen, you can also not take it from him. Look at his record. Uh, director HR, Director Welfare, Director Legal, Director Administration. He has saw what it takes about motivation, and it's a personal... So, so, so in fact, Mr. Kumado, you would have been surprised if he didn't do what he's doing. Yeah, I would have been surprised. I would have been surprised because nobody else could have done far better than what he's doing right. and his background. And I think that he's bringing to bear his past experience and his past academic records and his past working records as somebody who has had all these departments. And it's a commendable one. He must continue in that direction. This is what his boss did do properly. And I think he's doing it rightly. And we all must applaud him. And probably have a cup of tea. With him right. I, I like that. A cup of tea. So, so Mr. Kumaro, quickly, uh, yes or no, are you confident that this issue will be put to rest very soon with this renewed approach to dealing with it? I pray and I hope so. I pray and I hope so that there wouldn't be any diversionary tactics. I pray and I hope so they should continue working with the family. In every conflict, you will need confidence building. And once there's open communication, together with them as a family, as a team, I believe they will put this case to rest and right. we'll all be fine. All right. Mr. Kumado, thanks very much. Uh, nice speaking with you. Richard Kumado is a fraud and security consultant. Let's still stay uh, in uh, about these issues. Parents of a 17-year-old student of the Jachi Pramso Senior High School are appealing to the police and the general public to help locate their daughter. Daniela Osei Mensa reportedly left home in May last year for school but has since not been seen. Long before the kidnapped Takarate girl's case made waves in the country, a 17-year-old student of Jechipramso Senior High School had gone missing. Daniela Osei Mensa reportedly left the Iboka residence in the first week of May 2018 for school at Jechipramso in the Ashanti region, but failed to report to school. According to the father, Isaac Osei Mensa, there was a call from the school one week later seeking to know why Daniela had not reported after the holidays. His father then reported the case to the Ibuaka police on May 20, 2018, after their initial search failed to yield any results. However, till date, neither the police nor the family has received any news about the whereabouts of Daniela. So we brought the matter now to the media that we need help, that anyone who have been found here should report to the nearest police station. Volunteers may also call the police emergency number 101 or the crime fighters toll free number 18555 to assist. Very disturbing uh, narrative there. We do hope that the family uh, are able to locate their, their daughter as soon as possible. I'm Stephen Enti, and you're watching News at 10. We're live uh, from the News Hub at Adisawe Kanda in Accra. If you're watching on Facebook, we're streaming live on our Facebook page and on 3news.com. We'll be right back. Please stay. Now, it took the timely intervention of the police to disperse protesters at Pokuyasi Maira in the Gawest municipality of the Greater Accra region after they blocked roads over their poor states. They blamed successive governments for failing to get them reconstructed despite numerous promises. Here's a report by Messi Darling Loco. Residents blocked the major roads in this area with stones tables and bent car tires in the five-hour demonstration. The police who were at the scene to ensure it was peaceful had to call for reinforcement. The Gawast Municipal Chief Executive Clement Wilkinson, who wanted to address the residents, was heckled and prevented from any explanations. 
Residents say all they want to see is the construction of the roads. Assemblyman for Mayura Kwabna Pia said several attempts to get the roads rehabilitated have proven futile. I have followed the issues of this road for quite a long time. Um, but when it gets to the point when the people become disappointed as to various promises that has been made as to the construction of the road, sometimes, even though you wouldn't wish for such an event to happen, but you didn't have any option when they go on rampage. The residents have given government a two-week ultimatum. Right, that's how we wrap up with News at 10. Thanks very much for your time. On behalf of the crew here, good night.